Hi there. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. Welcome to another installment of Tis the Season. I'm, I've got a whole bunch of things I'm working on. I've actually been, I've, I've had some nice working time at my desk lately, and I think for some reason fate wanted me to just have quiet working time because two days ago I paused my camera to take a phone call and I guess I didn't touch it properly because I know I did to unpause it and continue recording. And uh, when my timer went off and I yelled, no way, <laughs> um, and I went to look, I just, it hadn't even started. So then I, what else happened? They were, anyhow, it, it wasn't meant to be. And then I recorded again yesterday and uh, or at least I thought I recorded again yesterday and when I was finished working on what I was wanting to work on uh, I went to check on the camera again and it hadn't even been recording at all the whole time so I'm crossing my fingers I cleaned out my the the, the, uh, the memory and uh, unnecessary files and I'm hoping that whatever was giving my phone grief that I cleared it up and, and oh, fingers crossed, this one's going to work. I'm working on a little, um, a little photo holder to put in Mrs. Cratchit's ledger. I've got quite a bit done and because I thought I recorded two entries, two um, episodes, I don't know what to call it, and then they weren't recorded. I'm not sure if I will, if, if anything will be repetitious. Um, so please forgive me if you're watching this and you go, Catherine, you showed us that. Catherine, we watched you do that. It's becoming a mad blur to me. <laughs> uh, anyhow, so I'm just going to go over everything I've got done so far. And then uh, we'll do a little work on this little, this little thing. So I have, let me see if I'm in. It's so difficult working on this. Um, let's do that. On the size of this, it's so big. So what I've done is I finished the fronts and the inside of this little tip out here. Uh, I glued in a little cherubim there. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I think that's the right one. I know there's a difference between cherubs and cherubim. I used to think cherubim was the plural of cherubs, and apparently it's not. Correct me if I'm wrong. Someone out there will know. Um, as far as I recall, if I recall correctly, cherubim are these little angelic beings that is just a head with wings, whereas a cherub actually looks like a little baby. It's a little, it's a little babe, naked baby angel and they're really cute. These ones are a little, but the Victorians love them. So far be it for me to, um, yeah, so she's there. And I added uh, this young little lady up here. These were from uh, Nancy. She gave me a whole bag of them and they're awesome. Um, they're silver and I wanted them gold because I've got brass here. I've got gold here. Uh, so I, you know what I did and it worked. <laughs> it worked. Uh, good old alcohol ink. I just painted it onto the silver areas and it worked. So it made, uh, it made that silver um, gold. So I'm going to put a few things away here so that I've got room. My desk is once again um, chaos. <laughs> So I've just got a few things tucked in here. I added some things here, just collaged flat on um, because uh, I anticipate that the tiny little writing journal will go into this place. So I wanted flat things here. Um, so I think that's fine. One of these is from a 1909 book I have and it was a poem about the beautiful hands of a mother and how they 
they're beautiful because of the work they do and the kindness they offer and the the caring they provide and I thought well I'm going to put this in here um, perhaps it was Mrs. Cratchit who put it in perhaps she passed her book down to one of her daughters um, you know Martha or Belinda or I believe there was another unnamed daughter can't really can't, can't remember Anyhow, um, and that maybe Mrs. Cratchit glued it in, but it was starting to lift. So by then, it was a few years ahead, and cellophane tape existed then, because I got to put in some cellophane tape. I just I love it, and this is the real this is the real deal. This isn't faux cellophane tape, um, which still looks great, uh, but this is the real deal that I've peeled out of various sources and I've glued it back in there, and I really love how that looks. Um, I put in a little ad here for a place that sells spectacles and uh, I liked this because I imagined that maybe Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Cratchit when they finally started getting in a bit more money when um, when Scrooge had his uh, his reckoning with the ghosts and uh, I recall in the story when she was teary-eyed by the fire and uh, the children said that uh, father was was coming in and and uh, so she wanted to um, she dabbed her eyes and said I won't have your father my eyes are tired from working in the dim light and I won't show tired eyes to your father um, and I thought maybe when they got more money that she thought wow I can afford this now maybe I will go and get some spectacles for her tired eyes um, over here, we we glued in, I glued in, um, our ballerina with all of her different little Victorian lacy things that I glued on and sewed on and, and what have you. I love how she turned out. Let me see if I can lift her up and show you. I love how she turned out. Her little shoes are blue, so I put a blue ribbon on there. And then she had bows on her shoulder, so I added some bows and... There's the bow holding her bouquet of roses. Then I added a rose up here. I like that there's, let me pull this down. There's a rose, a red rose here. There's a red rose here. And then there's the one up there. So it's, they're bright red. And I think that they give that nice triangle effect so that your eyes dart around this entire spread. So that was my intention. Plus I just love them. They're from vintage wrapping paper. Now, in here, I wanted a little tuck spot. I love these tags. My sister-in-law and her family um, have used these tags for my gifts, and I think it's because I've said before how much I love them. Um, and this year we got, no, last year we got two. This year we got one. Anyhow, you know what? And the year before we got one. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters is... Um, Although it looks very vintage, I needed it to look older. So I just wanted to show you the difference of what it looked like and then what I did to it to make it look even older. So I actually put a red reinforcement on it because this is just print. And then of course the miracle of distress ink. And then just for a little bit more of a Christmassy look, I added um, red and white baker's twine. And I glued it down specifically on an angle. I love when a tag, especially like a, a luggage tag or a shipping tag, sticks out like a tab. I just love that look. And I like the haphazard look of it being a bit on an angle. Now, I'll be tucking something else in there, but it's a tuck spot. And it's nice and sturdy. So uh, I, I love how that turned out. I think that's pretty. And then inside here... Um, Another little uh, a Victorian lady, well, young girl, holding a beautiful plum pudding. I glued her here specifically. I wanted the word Christmas to still be showing. I didn't, it said wedding here for wedding cake ornaments. I didn't care so much about that. I wanted Christmas evident, United Kingdom evident. Um, and of course, I, I love this London thing, so... Uh, I still have plans for this. Uh, I put a little bow on her because uh, the Victorians loved, as I keep 
mentioning, but I can't remember if I've, like I said, it's been a, a barrage, a blur of videos that for whatever reason didn't work out. Um, so what I want to do, oh, and then underneath will be the little, um, the little folio that we made. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm back here trying to find it. The folio that we made that contains blank unused ledger papers of various out of various books and uh, that she's put tucked them away for when she needs blank paper and they'll fit under there and then this will tie it down and hold it in place. I'm really loving how this is looking. Now I want to put, let's move this, let's move this. I want to, uh, I, I was looking over all my uh, cabinet cards that I have and thanks to the generosity of many um, wonderful people who have sent me happy mail this year, I have a, quite a nice selection of cabinet cards to choose from. And I had another one, a previous one that I was thinking about, but then I came across this one yesterday. And I just think this gentleman has the kindest looking face. He's not a sweet face. And he's kind of slight of build. And I just wonder if, you know, maybe it was a picture of Bob and that uh, Mrs. Cratchit, you know, kept it near and dear to her heart. Now I wanted to show you, and I've shown you before, so if you follow along with me, you'll remember what I'm talking about. My mother had a photo of my dad when he was away in the Air Force, and it was it was like this. It, the photo was in a little case, and she could open it up, and it made it special, and it kept it safe, and she could just, you know, hold on to her her picture of her beloved. And so I thought, I want to make a special one for um, for Bob's picture. So I've been working on it here and I just made it from a scrap of paper and chipboard because my dad's was quite thick. The one that my mom had for my dad's was quite thick to keep it, I guess, to keep it safe or to make it substantial to hold on to. So um, anyhow, so what I've done is, but I want Bob to be removable. So I've made some little, almost like Christmassy photo corners here. And I'm going to glue them in down there. And that way, his picture can be removed and she can look at it and uh, if she wants. Now, and I'm thinking now I want these a little bit shorter. I think they're too long. So let's see where the fold is. And I'm going to cut them a little bit shorter. Scissors, scissors. Okay. And I'm going to take that down. That's better. Now I'm going to ink those fresh edges. And then I have to finish inking this because I've got this part inked and the edges. And I'm glad I'm not finished because you can see the difference that inking makes in giving it a finished look. This this just looks so much better than uninked. Um, and I freehand cut this. The, I find the trick to making something have a really finished look as if something, as, as if a company made it. I'm not some lady, some random lady at her craft table. <laughs> um, is using your sanding block. You just get that beautiful, rounded, smooth edge and it uh, takes, uh, it smooths down if you're scissor cutting because it was too thick for me to get my uh, an X-Acto blade around that nicely. Um, your, uh, your sanding block is just um, so important and so helpful. Now, where is my sponge for twigs? I see walnut, I see photo, I don't see twigs. 
No. Oh, twigs. All right, I want to do this while I think of it. It makes all the difference in the world. And then hopefully that's low enough, but we'll see. I might want to take it down a little bit more. It's just to keep Bob safe in his little in his little uh, snuggy place there. Um, I want to finish inking this. And I may use some um, gilding wax. This still needs this still needs a bit more on an angle, so it's like a forty-five degree angle to, um, to take that knife edge off of the cardstock. Sorry, Bob. There we go. All right, let's ink that again. And even if I do end up using gilding wax, I don't know, I feel like having that under layer of the ink is good to have just in case some of it peeks through. Again, it's at least it's not white, white um, paper core showing. It just looks old and antique and been very much loved. I've been on a frenzy of listening to lectures on Charles Dickens. I, as I mentioned, I think, um, I've already listened to an audio version uh, this year of um, A Christmas Carol and uh, I really enjoyed it and you know what I was really pleased to find out I guess there's a reason why I really enjoyed it um, I listened to a lecture on uh, Charles Dickens and apparently one time he was asked um, what was the best way to enjoy uh, the story of a Christmas Carol and apparently according to Bob Bob I, I glanced over I glanced over at Bob <laughs> according to Charles Dickens the best way to enjoy a Christmas Carol is to ha listen to it being read aloud to not necessarily read it yourself but listen to someone else reading it aloud and you should do it in a cold dark room by candlelight and uh, I found that very very interesting but I did I I get it now about listening to it um, it's just so descriptive and it's if you can get a person reciting it um, who's good at what they're doing it's oh so nice and I can see how being in a dimly lit room with candlelight I mean it's a ghost story right I mean, it says it right in the title it's a ghost story it's meant to send chills up and down your spine so uh so there's a little uh suggestion for you if you haven't read or listened uh to a Christmas carol yet this year um over the holidays because it doesn't have to be done before Christmas it apparently it was Charles Dickens uh, favorite story to use um, he used to go on great tours of uh, readings of his uh, books and apparently uh, a Christmas Carol was his favorite one to read from okay so we're just getting that nice little halo glow that I like making the corners a little darker than the center now I should have inked this before I glued it all together so I'm going to have to make some magic happen in those creases 
because they're not inked the way I would like them inked. So I'm going to use a small brush and see if I can do this. Let me stand up and make sure I'm in camera. <laughs> oh boy, everything needs cleaning. I am. All right. Um, let's bring you down here. Let's see if I can come a little closer just for that. Hopefully I'll remember to back it up again. I go in with a smaller brush, or pardon me, um, a bigger brush. <sighs> that one's too big. Maybe this one. This one can make a really intense color. And I want to blend it a bit more. That might be a little better. So I found something else very, very interesting. Um, about uh, Charles Dickens. Um, his father uh, was uh, started off his family quite comfortably, was doing fine, but then encountered financial troubles and their houses they moved were slowly, as his troubles were increasing, um, he was moving to less and less desirable homes that he could better afford and provide for his large family. And um, the last house that they lived in before his father finally was sent to debtor's prison for non-payment of his debts. Um, and back then, when uh, if a man went to debt, a family man went. To debtor's prison his family went to the workhouse um, and you couldn't get out of debtor's prison until you paid your debts well how do you get a job <laughs> and pay your debts from debtor's prison to get out um, if you're in prison and you can't get a job anyhow um, so the last house that they have an address for where the Dickens were living uh, Charles' father was John Dickens. I can't recall his mother's name right now. Um, was on Bayham Street in Camden Town. And many people believe that that home is the home that Dickens used in his mind to imagine where the Cratchits lived. So think for a moment. This is the home that they eventually were living in after being quite comfortable. Not necessarily affluent, but very comfortable. And moving to lesser and lesser desirable neighborhoods and they ended up in Camden Town which uh, was the probably the most poverty-stricken area of London at the time uh, and they were living on Bayham Street well I my ears perked up when I heard that that their last address before going to prison and the workhouse was Bayham Street um, I thought why is that ringing a bell? Because my grandmother was born on Pratt Street, which actually is around the corner from Bayham Street. Uh, my gran was born actually at 28 Pratt Street. It doesn't exist anymore. It's all, it's been torn down. Uh, the, the little house that she lived in with, I mean, she was one of 10 children as well. She was very Dickensian. <laughs> um, anyhow, uh, so I went further back because my grandmother's father was Charles Keats, and his father was Charles Keats. So I went back one generation uh, to the previous Charles Keats, and sure enough, he lived on Bayham Street. How cool is that? Not the same house. Um, now, I forget my great-great-grandfather's house on Bayham Street, but it makes me wonder, did the Keats and the Dickens know each other? It's not a very long street. How cool is that? Oh, I got a map for you. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'm not getting anything done here. So this is a map. This is a copy of a map 
It's an old, old map. It's from, it's called Booth's Poverty Maps of London. How nice, eh? <laughs> and to know that your ancestors were in the poverty-stricken neighborhoods. But they, you know what? They did well. They did well for themselves. So you can barely see here. It says Camden Town. And um, there's, this is uh, Old St. Pancras, the church. Oh, there we go. <laughs> St. Pancras, uh, that's where my gran was baptized in the St. Pancras Church and all of her brothers and sisters. Anyhow, um, this little street here, let me see if I've got something that points better. This little street running along here is Pratt Street. And my gran's house was about here. This little street here is Bayham Street. So that's where uh, Charles Dickens' family lived on Bayham Street right before they got put into the workhouse um, and the father went to prison. And that's the street that my great-great-grandfather uh, had quite a large family and lived on as well. And he was a bricklayer, my great-great-grandfather. So how cool is that? I, there's my little connection to Dickens. Maybe that explains why I'm, I just adore all of his work. So, ha ha. You just, and now I haven't found the name Dickens. I, I, I don't, I haven't found any relatives yet with the last name Dickens. So that would have been a real icing on the cake. All right. So do you see a difference there now? That's nice and old looking. Oh, I have a feeling my timer's going to go off any second. So Bob can go into his new little home. Let's see if these are going to be all right. And if this uh, looks familiar, let me back up so I'm, if, if this paper looks familiar, which it should, I used it on this end paper um, just for a little continuity it's a little artistic license um, all right so let's see if I glue those in will Mrs. Cratchit be able to get her beloved Bob in and out I think they're still too tall I do so I am going to cut them down a little bit more. 27 minutes I am at. Listen, I'm not sure. I'm hoping I will have time uh, this week to post another um, entry of working on this book. I'm going to keep working on it. Uh, yeah, whether Christmas comes and goes I will finish this book and if you're like me I don't know I kind of think of the week between Christmas and New Year's as still Christmas don't you I feel like that's the time you spend the day you know the 24th and the 25th with some family members and if your family is big like mine you just can't do them all at once especially in pandemic times and that's what that week, that lovely week is all about. Fitting in more, more visits and more food, <laughs> which of course, you know, I need like a hole in the head. <laughs> but, uh, so I fear not if you're enjoying the work I'm doing on this book, I will, um, I intend to follow this through until it is done. Okay. All right, Bob, let's get you into your little, your new little home. And that will hold him in nice and safe and sound. I'm going to glue him down. And then I think what I will do, because I, I want to keep working, even though my camera is going to yell at me, is I think I'm going to run a ribbon across the back so that it can come down and I can tie it and hold it closed so that's that's my plan for this obviously I have a bit more inking to do um, 
and uh, that's it for today. I'll see if I have a bit more time later on and maybe get another episode in. Now, right now, I have to check and make sure that this one actually recorded. So actually, now that I think about it, if you've been watching it up until now, it means I was successful. Yay! <laughs> Take care, everyone. Hope you have a really great rest of your day. Bye. Oh, here's Bob. Bye.